Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, which is a revisiting of the 1973 TV movie, um, which has long been a favourite of Guillermo del Toro. This is actually credited as being from the teleplay by Nigel McKeon, who wrote the, who wrote the TV movie. And Guillermo uh, is a co-writer on the film, although he didn't direct it. It was directed by Troy Nixie. So the story this time around, which obviously bears a relationship to the original, is that there is um, a young girl from a broken marriage, her parents have split up, is sent to live with her father and his new partner in uh, a huge old house which they are in the process of renovating. He's an architect and they want to renovate because they want to get it on the front of Architectural Digest which will enable them to sell it, make profit, move on to the next thing, get them out of the financial troubles that they have. In the prologue we see something pretty hideous happening down in the basement involving chisels and teeth which I need go into. Do the teeth attack the chisel? The teeth attack the chisel. And nibble right. it people, away. People have their chisels knocked out by teeth. Okay. Um, and so you know that something bad is in the history of this house. Anyway, young girl moves into the house and immediately starts hearing voices, whispering voices, saying, come and play with us. Come and play with us. We're down here. Come and play with us. Yes, we want to play. We want to play with you. So she gets quite freaked out by this. Meanwhile, unsurprisingly. She's, unsurprisingly, she's been given a talking teddy bear by her, her by her father's new girlfriend. The talking teddy bear does that thing that all talking teddy bears do in horror movies. It talks out of context in a way which is vaguely creepy. She starts to think that there's something really bad going on in the house. In fact, she knows there's something really big, bad going on in the house. But does anybody believe her? Do they heckers like? Here's a clip. <laughs> I want them to come anymore. Who, Sally? <laughs> the little things. They live in the basement. They gave me the silver collar. They said they wanted to be my friend. That they're horrible and mean. Oh, Sally. <laughs> you just had a nightmare. No, it wasn't. Oh, Don't say it that. It's okay. My bear. Look what they did to my bear. <laughs> what sort of voice does the uh, teddy bear have? It goes, I love you. I love you. In a way that sounds really threatening and you know that worrying. That sounds comical. No, but that's it. No, but it's not. After that, I love you, and exactly that voice. That's actually the best impression I've ever done. That is exactly what it sounds like. Does it have like. any other phrases? No, it just says I love you. Well, that's all right. They should have given it the voice of Danny. I love you. Oh! Anyway, so as you can see, as you heard from that clip, it's a uh, it's a scary tooth fairy movie. Okay. And the, this is an idea to which Guillermo has returned, you know, many of us from Pan's Labyrinth, people will be, be, be aware of the way in which he does that with fairy tales, takes the idea, you know, the idea of something that may be sort of charming and fantastic and takes it back to its roots and actually makes it into something which is scary and strange and weird and bizarre. Now, when Guillermo was a child, he tells this story that he was obsessed with monsters, monsters under the bed, saw monsters in the wardrobe, everywhere, be genuinely believed in monsters. And one day he made a pact with the monsters. He made a pact with them that, that, that they wouldn't threaten him, but he would be their friend. And that was a life changing moment for him. And whenever he does fairy tale stuff, that's, that's a kind of key theme. One of the great triumphs of Pan's Labyrinth is the way in which it marries on the one hand the childish I mean that in a good sense fairy tale elements with the very very grown up and brutal uh, stuff going on which is around the Spanish Civil War which is to do with physical violence and there are moments in Pan's Labyrinth which are you know which are physically brutal and violent and yet somehow it marries together with the fairy tale elements the problem with Don't Be Afraid of the Dark which I really wanted to like a lot more than I do is that it never seems to marry those two elements together. So on the one hand, you have got these these brutal things in it, with particularly the open so the opening's fairly tough, although it's implied, but there is there is, you know, there is there is assault with sharp weapons on various persons, which is which is pretty brutal stuff. And yet the the fairy tale elements never quite marry together with that. It, it it made me think, and I hate to say this because there's nothing worse than saying, you know, reviewing the film you wanted it to be rather than the film it is. I kept thinking while I was watching it, if this was a 12 certificate movie, if they'd taken the, the harsher elements out and made it a 12 certificate movie, it actually would have been better. I would never would have said that about Pan's Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth has things in it that are genuinely terrifying and genuinely grown up and brutal and difficult. I mean, some scenes that are very, very hard to watch, and yet the fairy tale magic goes all the way through. I can only imagine that it's to do with a, a directorial hand, that the, 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 the director doesn't have the same skill that Guillermo does. Um, I think that, that that central idea about, you know, the tooth fairy tooth fairies being some kind of, you know, mythical beastie creatures and actually the idea that what they want to do is to take children's teeth is, when you think about it... With a chisel? No, 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 it's not them that do that. That's oh. the prologue. In the prologue, you see somebody... 
attempting to get teeth in order to appease whatever it is that's down in the cellar in return for the return of a lost child. So that's I'm not giving that's not a plot spoiler. That's the very very beginning of the film. It, the film begins with a shrieking opening prologue that is pretty sort of full on. But that central idea about the idea of the tooth fairy being a scary idea, I wanted to like it. And you look at the film and it's you know it's fairly elegantly done. Guy Pearce is a good performance from him. Katie Holmes perfectly fine. It just never gels. It never came together. It, ne it never rose above the level of being an interesting idea that was something about which the writer felt passionate and which, the, which I think the director has failed to make work uh, in the way that it should do. Now, I'm not saying that it's entirely a directorial problem. It may be a fault also with the writing. It, it, may, sim it may simply be that... The, the, it may simply be that the marrying of those elements in this particular story just isn't done well enough to make them work. But all the time I was watching it, I was reminded of the, the triumph of Pan's Labyrinth, just bringing those two things together, the fairy, the, you know, the fairy tale world and the very brutal physical world, and how well they were married and how beautifully they were married, and how much you forget sometimes when you're watching Pan's Labyrinth just how scary bits of it are, and thinking with this, it's not working in the way it ought to. And actually, wouldn't it be working better if it was a 12-certificate movie that was playing much more towards its fairy tale strength than it is?